Viewers, welcome to the Personal Injury Law Show. My name's Tony Carbone, Personal Injury Lawyer of 25 years experience. Next to me, I've got John Carantz, an accredited law specialist. Good evening, John. Good evening, Tony. Good evening, viewers. How are you tonight? Yeah, good, thank you, Tony. Interesting topic. Biological diseases it's, and... It's a very tough topic, Tony. And I've got uh, Nuncio Tartaya, an expert in public liability law. Good evening, Nuncio. Good evening, boys. And How welcome back. Yeah, thanks. Good to be back. But before we get to a, a biological diseases topic, Tony, uh, what's in the news? John, there's a lot in the news, so I just want to touch on different aspects of what I've been reading. There's a story about a lady, a female juror, who's suing the state government for falling off a ramp while she's serving on jury uh, duty. Ooh, that's, that's interesting, isn't it, John? It is an odd case, Tony. Um, <laughs> so this is in Mildura? Yes. This happened in Mildura while she was serving as a juror? She fell off the edge of a concrete ramp while performing jury service. Now, I take it, uh, Nuncio, under the Wrongs Act this week. Well, she's yeah. aggravated her knee well, and well, also sustained psychological in injuries. No? Well, this would be a, you know, your stock standard public liability claim where, you know, if she wants to uh, have a, a claim for her pain and suffering, uh, it's the 5% threshold, as, uh, it's, as we know. It's pretty ironic that uh, <laughs> she's actually carrying out jury, jury duty and she's been injured. Yeah, it's, it's an odd one uh, at that. The other one I want to take us to is um, there's... A toddler sued the airline, Virgin Airlines, for um, very nasty injuries, actually. The, at the time, the toddler was still unborn, and the, the mother was on a Virgin Airlines flight, John. Issue she, of listeria, Tony? Listeria, bacteria, mm. all sorts of... So listeria, what, bacteria. What has the mum eaten? She ate a, um, one of these chicken rolls, or chicken wraps. Oh, gee. And it's really caused all sorts of problems to this oh, uh, unborn it, child. The child was born two months after the as, incident. As we know, uh, chicken that's not cooked well, oh gee, Tony, it's, it's dangerous stuff. Well, a child's contracted bacterial infection called listeriosis, listeria bacteria poisoning, oh. gastrointestinal injury, developmental delay and anxiety. Oh, so it gee. sounds like a pretty big claim, doesn't it, John? It's, it'll be, again, a claim regarding uh, the infant, the injury to the infant, and basically the effect on the injury, uh, the infant over the rest of his life. Correct, Tony? Nuncio, oh, for sure. Isn't this under the airlines? Yeah, this would fall under the Civil Aviation Act, uh, which is uh, obviously an act for airlines, uh, for passengers directly. So that would definitely be a case under this uh, jurisdiction. It's basically act. codifying the Warsaw Convention. Yes. And you've only got how long to sue? Uh, two, years. two years. Two years. Remember that, viewers. You only got two years. Big, big claim there, Tony, isn't it? Oh, for sure. Yeah, Massive claim. Because the child apparently has got developmental problems. Oh, so, you know, so, so again, it'll be claimed for what well, pain and suffering and potential expenses. economic loss and That's a different medical expenses. How do you assess, do you assess a, an infant? Well, you might have to drag this case out a bit. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. It might be around for years. Yeah. Now, la the other thing I want to bring up is there was a World Health Agency's done various um, researches into the effects of mobile phones. There's a couple of um, a couple of people that have investigated, and they've said that uh, mobile phones does lead to brain tumours. That's uh, well, if this was proven, Tony, this would open the uh, the floodgates to a massive, massive litigation. I think there's already lit litigation in the states in relation to mobile phones, but it becomes important because we're probably one of the biggest users of mobile phones in the world. Or well, every child out there from about the age of 11, 12 upwards has got mm. a mobile phone these days. Well, scientists came up with this with these uh, issues a few years ago, didn't they, Tony? Because we've got these handsets right next to our um, frontal lobe and right next to our brain, well, basically. Mm. If you're on the phone off, long enough... Giving off these signals mm. whereby if the phone's next to your head for more than 10 minutes, 15 minutes, we all know the phone gets really hot in our hand. Yeah, it's been quite a few occasions when I've had it next to my ear for about 10 minutes and it feels like your ears are going to catch on fire. So you've got these ra uh, radio waves going into your brain, Tony, from, that's what I understand the, uh, what the, the, uh, the, the scientists are saying, which may possibly affect your brain capacity. Well, a Swedish study two years ago said, warned that children who use mobile phones are five times more likely to develop um, gliomas or medical conditions and tumours and things so like that. So we, we could have a, an effect on your neurological uh, condition, Tony. Yes. Um, maybe even motor neuron neuron disease, Tony. There's all sorts it's, of uh, things that could gee, arise from it's, it. It's opening a can of worms mm. in one sense, isn't it, Tony? Oh, definitely. And just before we get on to our topic, this sort of flows on from our subject. 
There's a flight attendant who sued an airline over lung damage. Um, she was working in one of these planes by of East West Airlines, airlines yep. and it was an old plane, and it was leaking oil, and uh, it leaked 1.75 litres of synthetic oil from the auxiliary power unit, and it went into the plane, and she says that she sustained... Um, well, she was breathing in these uh, fumes, wasn't she? Lung, yeah, lung, she, lung damage. She sustained she's lung, damage, lung damage, and now she's got, she says she's got a permanent cough. Yep. Now, she pro proved her case, didn't she, Tony? Well, she did, because she got a pay out of $138,757. Mm. So she, she, uh, the court found on the balance of probabilities, she sustained injury uh, by ta breathing in these fumes, and to her lungs. Yeah, and it was, it was shown that the airline didn't follow the recommended maintenance programs and procedures, and that, that oh. was the negligence uh, act in itself. So, so but this, it's a very unusual case, isn't it? It Mr. is, and look, uh, it's, it's you know, I think it was 18 years after the event, so it's, uh, it's odd in that regard. But you wouldn't think that it would happen often because this is a very old aeroplane, air yeah. and uh, I'm not sure how many uh, planes there are of that type going around still. Mm. And you would have thought they would have done something to prevent it from now on. Look, let's get on to the topic of biological diseases. Just as a, a bit of a backdrop, there's um, a study that says that around the world there's 320,000 workers that die each year from biological hazards. Now, in Australia, there's 1,300 workers compensated annually for diseases attributed to biological factors, mainly asbestosis and mesothelioma and associated conditions. Now, Nuncio, what's asbestos? Oh, look, basically, it's a, it's a naturally occurring silicate, uh, silicate uh, mineral uh, that uh, I suppose uh, can be exposed to uh, uh, any type of person and uh, can cause disastrous uh, uh, ramifications. As Tony says, asbestosis, which is like, you know, you're coughing and you're breathing, uh, breathing uh, short of breath, and also then you've got mesothelioma and lung which cancer, is which is form of it. disastrous. Well, well all, you need, all you need is one fibre of the asbestos, asbestos to be lodged in your lungs, to be breathed in, and maybe 10, 20, 30 years later, that will form into a cancer, won't it? Sadly, viewers, we're one of the biggest users of asbestos in the world. Um, we have used to have asbestos sheets in our bathrooms mm. and toilets and... Uh, Why did they use asbestos, Tony? Oh, it had all sorts of properties to withstand heat, erosion, decay, fire, water cheap. resistant. And it was cheap. It was light and cheap. Okay. It was cheap. Houses were built out of it. It's uh, and at the moment, you, we, you're still finding, and pe renovators are still finding houses to this day with that material in it. Well, really? when you have to remove it, mm. you know how expensive it is. Mm. Look, we've got to go to a uh, sponsors break, so viewers, please stay tuned. Don't go away. We'll be back very shortly. Thank you.